Good morning and welcome to BC 315 course on life skills. So today we're going to discuss on, um, on some of the chapters from our notes. We start with team decision making. Last class we looked into creativity and critical thinking. So today we will discuss on team decision making and move on to emotional and cultural intelligence. Okay, so, <clears throat> so when we talk about decision making, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? In the meanwhile, let me present the PPT that I've prepared for the class. Just give me a minute. Yeah, so what comes to your mind when we talk about team decision making, or group decision making, what comes to our mind? Anyone from the class, you can unmute and share. You know, a major decision that comes to our mind, you know, something very critical, um, you know, a group of people discussing on some major matter, uh, big decisions, where it is an opportunity, like what Siddhant says, it is an opportunity for us to learn from each other. And we see Asha shares on, you know, making choices. Its decision is somewhere where most of the ideas has been put forth and we will choose the ideas that may be applicable for us. And we also see Abhina share of planning. Yes, as a group, we plan, we decide together. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> so... In this class and today we're going to uh, decision making in itself is a big chapter okay uh, so i don't think we can cover it in one class so let us take up you know a, a part of it you know, how to make a decision precisely how to make a decision wisely so it involves decision making involves a calculated speed in a sign of confidence, intelligence, and effectiveness. So it's not just about getting a task done or completed. It's about getting the right things done fast. So people respect others more when they make a wrong decision and grow from it as opposed by other people. And sometimes we also come across people who are very afraid to make a decision from the past failures because of their past failures. So there is a tendency for people to rely on one comfortable approach. So in today's class, we see what does uh, some of the other scholars or some other uh, Harvard Business Review talk about. So we see that uh, Paolo Gordiano points out that Effective decision making isn't about data or experience. It's about uh, the integration of both. So decision making is a learnable skill where people who think they aren't good at making decisions have often talked themselves out of being effective at making decisions. So a lot of the work I do with uh, with the other team members in and around involves the power and influence. So one of the quickest ways uh, to lose or gain that influence capital uh, is around decision making. So if you're taught as someone who can't make a decision, it deducts from your influence back account. So if your thought of someone who can make tough decisions, again, it makes deposit into your influence back account. So I put here some of the decision making uh, common mistakes that we do while we uh, do our decisions or make our decisions. Just give me a minute. Let me move on to the next slide. Can you see? Yeah, these are some of the mistakes that we do uh, while we uh, mistakes that we do when we make our decisions, like thinking that the more important a decision is, 
the more difficult it has to be to make a call or um, believing that the amount of time we spend on a decision directly improves the value of our decision. And we also see that spending too much time on collecting the information can also make, you know, uh, lead us to make mistakes in our decision making. And uh, fourth, we also see that letting feelings cripple our own progress. I think most of the time we go by our feelings and emotions than actually what it is. And uh, fifth, we see that going with our first choice, not taking up considering the other choices that may be better. Six, worrying too much about what others think. Seventh, not worrying at all what others think. So in this case, both are wrong. So we need to be moderate, we need to be neutral, we need to look out everyone's opinion, okay, and not take up any sides. That is when we may go wrong. Eighth, not having a consistent approach in making a decision. So as we have discussed on some of the common mistakes that we make in decision making, I would like to also discuss on the three types of decision making that may help as a leader for us to make certain decisions. So here we would like to discuss on three types of decision making, that is command consensus and combination. So a command, it's a decision where one person is in control and they make the decision. It's often the case that the decision is already made and there is no need to involve others in the process. The second method we see is consensus, where we compromise. So here we see the decisions is when all the parties are involved in making that decision. So the goal is to set all points of view and make a decision that everyone can support. So mostly it's an appropriate uh, decision-making system when we have in a group discussion or a team discussion where we take the idea we receive the idea from everyone and implement that which is applicable and good for all, all members of the team. The third is a combination, where a combination decision is when you integrate the points of others' view. Then we make the decision on our own or designate that one or some group to make the decision. Once we know the type and follow the three steps to make the decision. It's helpful for us to follow the three steps. So under this cognitive decision, uh, the three steps is define, deliberate, and decide. So in define, we see that the challenge and the decision rules have been defined. We think through the process, how important, how urgent the decision is. And then we give ourselves a timeline and then we decide who needs to be involved in. And then we see what are the processes that is involved, what are the strategies need to be thought before and what are others, um, you know, our perspective and the others perspective. So in this, we see certain criteria. We see that is the practical and the ministry front so the practical is about who has the information and uh, or uh, or uh, who can leverage this project and in ministry side we see that who needs to be involved who can be more uh, uh, um, uh, eligible or who has the ability and skill set to take up that project so we see who this uh, project or uh, an assignment can be given to who can build and work on it okay and the, th uh, the second type we see here is deliberate deliberately we try to identify the options make a list of the possible outcomes and their impact so this is also an opportunity when we discuss the potential opinion with others and then make a decision 
So in this decision, we see that uh, head concept is also about being analytical and very logical. And we also see that we focus on the uh, rational side of thinking and the facts that are involved. We also see our primary concern is about getting the right things out. We also see in this type of uh, decision making, that is deliberate decision making, we not only involve our mind, we also involve our heart and um, our hands where we deal with our feelings and we we are more focused on our emotion and how to how would this decision impact others and we also see that who can get this project uh, who can do the uh, who can uh, do this project well so we assign to that person deliberately and then the third type we discuss is on decide. So making a decision and moving forward with confidence is a skill. So we need to have a confidence in the process that we have done our due diligence. We hard think about making a decision is a struggle before the decision has actually been made. Um, yeah, with that, we have discussed on the decision making. So, in decision making, we we covered all the common mistakes that we do, and uh, how do we commonly? What are the three types of uh, uh, three things? Three things that are involved in decision making. That is command, consensus, and combination. We discussed, and under combination, we discussed on how we can define. Uh, deliberate and decide the decision when we are in the process of decision making. So with that, we will move on to the next chapter. Next chapter. Okay, it's on emotional and cultural intelligence. Just a minute. Okay, let me change the slide. Yeah, the slide is here. Okay, is it effective in the class? Are you able to see the new slide? Okay, so how are we being emotionally sensitive? Okay, so to be emotionally sensitive is to be aware of our own feelings and feelings of others. So emotionally sensitive is a necessary building block for those who are close, satisfying relationship. But some people are too sensitive, it's like trying to get close to a Pokemon. So if we are too sensitive, we have little awareness of the depth of our own feelings and except to know that our emotions are powerful and painful at times. So we are a particular, uh, for example, we are, uh, we are particularly aware of how the behavior of others would affect us. If we are too sensitive, we may land up uh, taking things very personally that happens around us. Most often, react defensively to other people. Or we may land up judging others as being hurtful to us. And our primary interest uh, would be in our own experience rather than, you know, what the other person is thinking or feeling. 
So being emotionally sensitive can be, you know, a valuable quality when it is tied directly to emotional awareness. So our sensitivity is the key to understand our own emotional experience and the emotional experience of others at the same time. But our work must begin with us. We cannot develop emotional in intimacy with others unless and until we understand and have become comfortable with our own emotional experience. So our emotions are the signals that identify what parts of us need to be healed. So here are a few steps that uh, we can take if you want to move from being overly sensitive to be emotionally aware. So the first, we must learn to love ourselves and this love must be based on self-knowledge and compassion. Second, we must develop healthy boundaries and relationships. Once we know where the boundaries are set, we must be willing to take responsibility for our part of relationship. And, and lastly, we must learn how to handle the criticism of others. So highly sensitive people tend to be, uh, you know, conscious and empathetic and may also notice some changes in their interaction and in their environment as well. So some benefit of being very sensitive also with benefits. So some of the benefits are it helps in social skills. So when we say highly sensitive people, these people tend to notice things others do not. They pick up on others' body language and other subtle cues that may help develop a strong social skills. The second thing, benefit, which th these highly sensitive people tend to have is being empathetic empathy. So they be more sensitive to others' emotions and their moods. So this may offer them more insight into other people's life. So it can also help them to detect others' motives and inclination and potentially make them a good manager or negotiator and a leader. So as a good leader, we need to be empathetic. Now, the third point, the benefit what these people can have is sensitivity to the environment around them. So these highly sensitive people may notice environmental cues others do not have. So in the right setting, this can help them detect the danger around. So as, been, as we have discussed a little bit on the emotional sensitive, let's move on to the cultural sensitive. So what is cultural sensitive? Class, anyone can unmute and share. So let me keep the class interactive. What is cultural sensitive? Anyone from the class? What is cultural sensitive? Being sensitive to others' culture, yes. Being aware of the cultural differences, yes. You're right, Asha, Sudan, that. So there's a definition of cultural sensitive is having an understanding of another person's set of beliefs or values that is attributed to the person's ethnic or racial background. So being said that, in addition, an individual must be agreeable to modify their behavior to accommodate other person's cultural belief. 
So as an individual, we must first recognize and appreciate that there are other cultures besides their own. Then they need to be willing to respect the belief and the tradition of the people who display their culture. So people's culture defines the uh, food a person eats or their belief system or uh, it can also be in the belief system of their healthcare, religion, language, and how people interact with the other world around them. So the meaning of cultural sensitive is simply put across like for us to understand that one culture or a way of living is not superior to another. So all cultural beliefs are valid and is indeed to be respected. So culturally being sensitive to the individuals must be accepted and adapted to reflect the multi, multicultural countries that exist in the modern societies. So uh, in modern societies, we see that the cultures are blending like never before with the increase in the migration and the interconnectedness uh, that the internet provides. So in multicultural sensitivity is particularly important because it promotes a more um, cohesive society while honoring the unique identity that, uh, that uh, a multicultural society provides. So culturally sensitive society promotes the empathetic connectivity through the appreciation and understanding of another person's background and the way of life. So by valuing diversity, people will be able to play to their strength within a society. So this is what we can look into in cultural intelligence. So we discussed on briefly discussed on the emotional and the cultural intelligence with that we can move on to the change. Change is something that is unchangeable, isn't it? So on this chapter, I would recommend our APC publication book on change. And I request, uh, I request you to please download this book and read it. Just let me. I'm posting the link for this book. Request you all to please download the book, ABC publication on change. Request you all to please read so that you know we can have this chapter covered in depth through the publication book. This can also be one of your assignments where you all can read and uh, share your views on that. Okay, lastly, we are going to look into the continuous learning where most people associate the learning with formal education at school, college, university. And we are all told from an early age that we should get a good education. So generally speaking, it is true that the education and uh, the resulting qualifications are very important and education may maximize our potential to find better, more satisfying jobs or earn more and become more successful in our chosen career. So this has been said from generation to generation. So we see that schooling is the only a type of learning where there are many other opportunities to actually further uh, expand our knowledge and develop the skills that we need in our life. So knowledge can be acquired and skill sets, skill sets can be developed anywhere. So learning is something that is unavoidable and it happens all the time. So learning is something that we should be open to despite our age, despite our limitations. So however, Continuous learning is about creating and maintaining a positive attitude to learn both 
for personal and professional development. So continuous learning are uh, continuous learners are a bit motivated to learn and develop because they want to. It is a deliberate and a voluntary act. So continuous learning can enhance our understanding of the world around us, provide us with more and better opportunities that can improve our quality of life. So there are two main reasons for learning through throughout our life. One, it could basically be for our personal development and for our professional development. Let me put off the slide as we have finished discussing on this. Yeah, thanks. So those are reasons that may not be necessarily be uh, distinct, okay? The first can, one can be the personal development that can improve our employment opportunities. Obviously, when we develop certain skills, when we uh, achieve certain, uh, learn new talents and achieve uh, uh, certain skills, and we see there's more opportunity being given to us to work and enhance our skills. The second we see professional development can enable personal growth. So as we develop certain skills, we see professionally we are growing. So learning for its own, for own brings its own advantage. For example, learning in whatever context, it can boost our confidence and self-esteem, makes us less risk and more adaptable to change when it happens. Third, we see it helps us achieve a more satisfying personal life. We also see that it challenges our ideas and beliefs and can be fun. So learning for personal development. So here we see it does not need to be a specific reason for learning since uh, learning for the sake of learning can itself be a rewarding experience. So we see some of the common views that continuous learning can have is having an active mind throughout. We are keeping our mind active and you know, um, uh, there's a delay or halt the progress of some form of dementia although there is an actual very little scientific evidence to support these claims so uh, despite that scientific reason by uh, but a continuous learning can keep our brain active so there are certain advantages that has been attached to it so there are of course like many reasons why people learn for self-development First is we have about five points listed in our notes. We see that the first point it says we may want to increase our knowledge or skill around a particular hobby or pastime that you enjoy. Second, we see that perhaps um, we want to develop some entirely a new skill that will in some way enhance our life. It can be anything as per your interest. And the third, we see that uh, we may want to research a medical condition or anything to do with your ancestry. Fourth, you can see uh, we may plan a trip and want to learn more about the history and culture of that destination, which can also help others in the theme as you plan. The fourth, fifth, we see that maybe uh, we should decide to take a degree course and keep ourselves active and uh, uh, be equipped. Doesn't matter our age or uh, you know which place we are, but we should challenge ourselves to to keep ourselves active, to keep our brain active, learn new things. Okay, and yeah, so that is one of the way which, you know, we can keep ourselves active, fun and enjoyable in learning new things. It can also be upgrading ourselves, updating ourselves with some new technologies that have been developed around us so that we can catch up with a generation that is coming ahead. And we also move to the second option of learning, that is the professional development. So being well educated is not necessarily the key to employment so although uh, it can be a qualification we may get uh, 
get you into an interview, actually getting a job can take a lot more. So what does the employers look these days are well balanced people with a transferable skills. So this includes the ability to be able to demonstrate that you are keen to learn and develop. So our capacity to earn is directly related to our willingness to learn. I repeat, our capacity to learn is directly related to our willingness to learn. So if we find ourselves unemployed, then how do we use that time? We need to use that time wisely. There are some ways that we can make use of, like learning something new, getting new skills developed so that we can look out for new opportunities in our way so that we can be, uh, we can, uh, we can, you know, start a new career altogether with a new skill that you learn. So use your time in a beneficial way that you can be employed in certain company or certain field due to the new skill that you have developed. That can also be one of your professional in future. So, and also the next we see putting the time in for extra learning brings its own reward. Definitely. Despite your work, your ministry, we need to take that extra time to learn, to develop a new skill. I know this is very challenging these days. You may have a family, ministry, work, but it is worth if you can make time and try to get a new skill, okay? Try to learn and update yourself with a new skill that may be an added advantage for your career. Next point, we see learning gives you options. So what we like to share here is whatever your life path, there are a number of ways that can benefit to continually or uh, continual learning or, uh, you know, the professional development. So despite our age, it is never too late to start one because most people still rely on succeeding in their employment for their ability to earn a living. But we need to be uh, more focused, more, uh, more focused and, uh, you know, uh, be diligent to make time or I can say intentionally to make time to learn new skills, uh, new courses that can help you uh, to be more confident in your career, in your life, or as a person as well. So instead of we really trying to keep our work, our ministry monotonous, try to take time in your daily schedule and see what are the new skills that you could learn and implement. It has been said that it's not too easy, but then if we try, I'm sure we all can make time for that new skills, new learning. So that this is something that I would like to leave this class with. Continuous learning is something that does not stop with our age or time or situation. It goes on till the last day of us. We try to learn, update ourselves continuously. It should be one of our habits that we learn, learn, learn. We can learn from people. We can learn from books. We can learn from, you know, you watch, you read. Learning is something that is continuous. Even learning from little children can add a value to each of us. So this is something that we should not give up or be closed upon, but then we should have this attitude or we should develop this attitude of continuous living, uh, learning that can uh, help us on a long run. Yeah, with that, we end this whole course of life skills. So I'll keep the class open. You can share your views, how the life skills, the, if there's anything new that you have developed during the course of time that has helped you to focus and help you to enhance in your ministry or in your personal or professional life, you can share how a new skill that you learned during this course of time or any kind part of your life that has helped you to handle certain areas well. So open to class, please go ahead, share your experience so that we can close this course with a bit of prayer.
also as you're preparing to share um, we will be posting uh, two quiz I would request you all to please have a watch on your Google class work and try to answer it the fourth time so that we don't miss out on our marks as well okay so yeah open to class please go ahead and share your your views how you learned a new skill that has helped you in your ministry in your workplace professionally personally that it has blessed you anyone Anyone from the class, was there any course that you learned? Sister Rupa, would you like to share any new skill that you learned that has helped you in the path of your ministry? OK, I think the network dropped. Shri Kumar, would you like to share? Thank you, Pastor. I am doing yes. my uh, advanced Excel uh, so that uh, I, I am also uh, doing some courses from the, it's, it's something which is free courses from Google directly. So I am also uh, doing it. As you said, it's difficult. But uh, yeah, I am taking a little time. That's nice. Doing, yeah, that's two things I just want to share. But yes. it was a very eye-opening for me to learn so many things as a church. Many times um, people think that only spiritual things are needed. So, But I believe that uh, this is very important. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks for your class. Thank you. Yes. These are certain skills that can come in handy despite your ministry. It also can be a professional skill that you could add and that could develop you know, or make you be confident in your work, whatever area you're doing. And advanced Excel is something very important. Yes. Anyone from the class? Subhijit, Dabishay, Kung, Siddhan. Are there any new skills that you are learning during the course? Yes, Asha, please go ahead. Um, I, le I learned a lot in this life skills how like creativity really helps in our um, the way we communicate or the way whatever in activities we do. It's just something that God has put in within our lives as soon as we were from, He knew what we were going to become and what we will be doing in the future. The most important thing is communication with I sometimes lack in that way because in many ways I do that, but as I was learning this, I found the proper way to communicate and also like to develop more uh, the skills of knowing how to and when to do stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Asha, for sharing. And I also see Kung share like one of my takeaway from this class is about the communication, where she's she's become more aware of the verbal and non-verbal communication. We also see Maxim Poster commencing this course has sharpened them on personal development plans, having vision and using a personal skill. Yeah. Anyone else in the class, Sister Rupa, would you like to share? Anyone from the class, Rose, Maxin, Maxin is already shared, Simran, good, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for the life skills class. It has yeah. really uh, enabled us to see where we are going wrong and correct ourselves and to be more focused on the things we can do the further best of the people we are communicating with and uh, shepherding 
it's very personally also very helpful ma'am you have uh, made it very interesting thank you for that and god bless you really bless through the class we have to put it put them into practice it's yes. only That's at the right. binding state and at the, some places where we are doing things wrong need to correct thank you ma'am thank True. you right. god bless you thank you thank you so much yeah there are so many skills that we learned and also learning and we would be continuing to learn because life skill doesn't stop where we are but the point is like what sister rupa was sharing we need to apply it we need to apply it in our life we need to put that into action that's where the skill is all about so yeah been said that when i'm working on that many skills we tend to learn many things we want to do we desire to do but yes we need to you know come into an action where we put that skill into practice in our own life and see how it makes us it improves us to be efficient in every area that we are we also see a comment from rose sales to to first and foremost to be a good listener very important yes and the 10 principles of learning really helps especially when we deal with people in our ministry very true rose like we yes so that okay take away personal planning understanding the skills we need to develop to achieve our vision knowing clear vision of where we want to be and why thanks thanks for sharing sadant okay so if there's anyone to share you can unmute and share or post it on the chat or we can close the session with a word of prayer okay has everyone are silent i guess uh, yeah okay fine we can close the session with a word of prayer and y'all can please uh, take a note of the uh, assignment and quiz that will be posted on the class room it won't be an assignment there would be a quiz posted on the class work and i would request you all to please read the apc publication on on the topic change that which will help us motivate us and you know embrace the change that we need to develop the nerve cell so request you all to please download that book and read through read through it okay so can i request us to rupa if you can close the session with a word of prayer please sure ma'am one second father we thank you We bless your holy name this morning individually and as a group and this learning lord this valuable teaching you have ministered unto each one of us holy spirit god let it not go into waste but enable us to put it into practice and be faithful towards to the knowledge you have imparted to us lord god Father God, we thank and praise you for the way you are bringing us together. And Father, thank you for shedding light in all areas where we need to enhance, correct ourselves, and improve. Master, we thank and praise you. Help us to be, Father, your changes. Help us to change ourselves and also bring changes in the places where we are ministering. according to your will and purpose thank you for pastor nancy father and pastor paul the family the ministry they are doing faithfully unto you lord god increase your anointing and your faithfulness in their lives lord god lord you are good in each one of our lives lord strengthen us in your might father god bind us together with your purpose and your love father god in jesus name enable us to father go forward in your faith and guidance in jesus name amen amen thank you ma'am
in cellular lost. Thank you. Sorry, my mic was muted. None of them said there. Yeah. Okay, thank you each one for joining the semester, the course, Life Scale. It was a joy journey through, and uh, it was a blessing. I hope uh, you will develop new skills, just not these, what we went through, but new skills that can help each one of us in our ministry, in our, in our professional workplace. Okay, so God bless. Uh, see you all next year. But then I want to end this uh, session by wishing each one of you all a blessed Christmas and a very happy and a prosperous New Year. God bless you all. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Thank you. Wish you the Thank same. You. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.